Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome the Creighton 6S EXP RTR. Now this is the first and possibly the last unboxing of 2024. And I know you're thinking, what is he talking about? But I genuinely guys mean it. I have spent and bought quite a bit of cars at the end of 2023. So from my absolutely awesome Savage X to the Kagama, to the Asuga, Mojave 4S, as well as, if you don't know, that right there is a big rock. It's got some issues. But I really, guys, want to settle down and stop buying new cars. I want to work on what I have. For some of them, just find a way to keep them running. But that genuinely, guys, is my, you know, it was kind of funny. I was thinking about talking to my wife about things I want to do in 2024 with the channel and all that kind of fun stuff. And I'm not kidding. This is what I want to do. And the Creighton 6S EXP RTR is, in my opinion, and should be, I mean, I haven't even driven it yet. I've driven other Creighton 6S EXPs, but this is the RTR one. This should be at the height, the pinnacle, however you want to say it, of 6S bashers. I have always loved Creightons. And the original Creighton 6S EXP, the roller, was an absolutely amazing truck. I sold it when I started getting other trucks from companies. And then I kind of realized after that I had missed this, that nothing beats a Creighton EXP 6S. And I'm just going to put that out there right now. So I am really excited, guys, that this came back. The day that I think ordered or I got my Big Rock 6S shipped, I think was the day that Armour released the first video of this. And I was like, oh, man, what should I do? I went ahead, kept the Big Rock. But I did, I knew right from the beginning, I knew from the minute I saw it that I was going to have to pick this up. So, you know what? This is an unboxing video and I've just spent two minutes rambling. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get in the box. We're going to check out the trucks. We will go over some of the box art and all that kind of fun stuff. We're going to get into details of the trucks, all the things they've changed. And just go over why, guys, I believe this will be the truck of 2024. And not only that, I believe that this will be the truck that if you buy, you're not going to need anything else. Because... One of the competitors to this truck that's the same price, hey, I'll say it, guys, it's an absolute joke compared to that truck. But anyways, guys, let's get into that box. All right, guys, so like I mentioned, we will go over the box art in a bit, but I really just want to get this truck out. I want to see it. I want to see how that red, if it's the same as my Outcast 8S EXP RTR. And, <laughs> yeah... So you still get this little thing it talks about putting on the tires, watching your torque and all that kind of fun stuff. I think that's anyways what it is. Titan nuts, very tight, recommended torque, 3.7 foot pounds, 17 millimeter rinse, serrated wheel nuts, just kind of indicates that one side of the wheel nuts are serrated and all that kind of fun stuff. But, oh yeah. We've got your usual bag of goodies in here. So we've got batteries, we've got the wheel wrench, we've got the high tooth of the high speed pinion so i think it's a 16 tooth pinion i can't see right now you've got your shims as well as it looks like a, a set of your your limited slips so your little discs that go in the differentials to make it limited slip i don't think i actually like the ones that i had on my creighton 6s exp i did get used to driving that truck with them and i kind of liked it but i think just being able to tune this thing the old-fashioned way will be all i need you got Copperhead 2s. As far as I know, these are the same tires. They are vented. They feel pretty cold because they just got off the truck. But, hee <laughs> yeah. Here is... Oh, I, could... I almost forgot. We've got a transmitter in here. And we've got zip ties. So, we're going to cut those. And these are the same things where you can release them, but honestly, I never used the ones that I cut from the last truck. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's one there, and there's one right there. All right, guys, there it is, the Arma Creighton 6S EXB RTR. Now, I went ahead and put the tires on just because I wanted to see the truck. I wanted to see it sitting here in its RTR form, it's, and it looks insane. The original EXB roller body, the 6S body, looked awesome. I love the black. I love the gray, the flat, the gloss. All that kind of stuff looks amazing. But like what they did on the 8S trucks, adding the red... So having Creighton written in red and just a few little bits of red on the body really make this truck and the body pop even more. The one thing with my 6S roller was as soon as you kind of scratched it up and you got, you know, the shredding of the rocks along the side of the body, it did dull it a bit. So I think the red is just going to kind of help keeping it pop even as it starts getting abused and, you know, wrecked. I would have liked to have seen it. I'm kind of sad. I wish they had stuck with the red hexes. So... My Typhon and a few other armors I have do still have the red hexes. I think I may even have some in a drawer. I'm probably going to switch those out to the red on this truck. I'm looking right now at my Typhon and I can see the red one. So I kind of like the red anodizing between the shock towers and the braces and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's my one thing I'm going to change. But either way, guys, what I want to do first is we're going to get the box back on the bench. We're going to go over some of the box art, go over some of the details. But then we're going to get back. We're going to get the body off and we are definitely going to have fun. We're going to check out this truck. And hopefully, guys, the weather holds out for me. We've had kind of some miserable weather in the sense that it's been raining and it's cold, or it's been sort of starting to get cold, but we haven't gotten any snow yet. So fingers crossed. But either way, guys, let's go grab that box. All right, guys, we're going to start on the bottom. Going over just some of the new stuff, you've got the new wing mount. And the big thing here, guys, obviously, with this Creighton is the aluminum red anodized diff housing now these are front and rear bulkheads it's sort of funny because for me when i think of bulkheads i just think of the traxxas emax and having to swap those out to rpm bulkheads so every time i think of bulkheads i only can ever think of the traxxas emax which i know doesn't really make any sense but that's just how i feel you've got the new servo so if we slide this over you can see right here now we the s652 was a great servo that's what was in a lot of the trucks before the arma fire team all that kind of stuff 18 kilograms 263 ounces of torque they've now upped that servo to an s665 which is 20 kilograms of torque and 277 ounces of torque 
And, you know, these are magical little beings, these servos, because I have many upgraded servos that have twice the torque. And I actually have always found, and again, guys, I'm just going to keep referring to the S652. This was a great servo on the fire team. It turned those tires no problem. Even when I upgraded to bigger tires, it had no issues. My big rock, obviously, guys, has the S665. And I've been running those MX-38s, the Proline MX-38s, the Badlands, those big tires, not the originals, the big ones. And that had no problem turning those either. So definitely, guys, one of the best RTR servos in the business. Now, coming down here, guys, to the bottom, you've got the Firma 150 version 2. So that's going to be good for 2, 3, 4, and 6S. I noticed on my box that the seals had been cut and they had been replaced with like another seal type thing. So what I think has happened is Arma has done the firmware update before the trucks got shipped. So with the Big Rock, there was kind of a big issue with the firmware. There were some wonky things that the truck was doing and they did release a firmware upgrade that fixed all that. But unfortunately, a lot of people kind of took advantage of that, wrote Arma, complained and got free program cards shipped out to them. Those cards were only like 25 bucks. And to be really fair, guys, they're great to have. I've got the Hobby Wing digital programming card. I never had the firmer one. So this obviously made me get it because the Hobby Wing program card does not work with some of the newer ESCs from Spectrum. They worked with some of the older ones, but not the new ones. So I'd already picked that up for my Big Rock. So we will in this video, guys, plug it in. We'll see what version the firmware is at and all that kind of fun stuff. Now, in the bottom of the box, you get a better image of that new split tower to tower chassis brace. I'm really, really happy, guys, with that setup. I think it's going to be improvement over the solid one piece kind of lighter aluminum, if you want to call it type thing. Down here in the bottom right hand corner, you've got the steel EXP turnbuckles, as well as, guys, right here, the EXP and the EXP Ackerman plate. Now, those three parts. I did order upgrades for, so I did place a little order, guys, with Scorched RC. I've got all those parts coming in titanium as well as the rear titanium chassis skid plate. I've always wanted to kind of check out his parts. I've always wanted to check out titanium, so I thought with this truck I would go that route. 7075 chassis, few upgrades when it comes to the shocks and all that kind of fun stuff, but you know what? We spent long enough on the box. Let's actually get right, into it. I'm going to start in the front here, and I can't help but just gawk at those new bulkheads those the red anodizing between the 7075 shock tower and the bulkheads the ex the cap right here that kind of covers your sway bars where it has the exp on it those just look amazing the red shock bodies the black anodized caps and going with just the black spring now i did look up the part numbers for those and the springs from the previous creighton to this one they show the same part numbers they show the same stiffness so I'm not sure if they actually changed it or not. I was I would have bet that they did with just the way the truck felt, like when you push it down and stuff like that. I would have thought it was something different. I know that they've changed like the pistons and a few other things internally in the shocks. I haven't really dove that. I haven't gotten really in depth with that yet. I haven't spent a lot of time looking into it. But overall, very happy guys with the way everything looks. Very happy with the setup. And again, I had to start here at the front of the truck because I really do feel like those bulkheads are... They just really kind of put this truck into its own sort of category now. There's nothing else out there that has that level of just pure awesomeness to it. And you're getting this in an RTR. Now it's costly, guys. It's $699. Yeah, it's a thousand. It's nine oh something. I actually think, guys, right now, uh, Eliminator RC has the best price on this truck. I've looked through some of the other websites in Canada, some of the other shops. And they've, they're have they beating other people by 50, 60 bucks. So there will be a link to Eliminator's website if you're here in Canada so that you can go and check out and buy this truck. But again, guys, very, very happy with just the delivery that Arma has done on this truck. Now, a few of the parts that Arma has improved on is this rear chassis brace. So it is still 6061 aluminum. It's still anodized red and all that kind of fun stuff. But underneath, you can see right here, these two screw holes. The brace itself, guys, has just more surface area on the chassis, so it's going to provide more support. The Big Rock 6S also has this kind of dual screw design. The only thing is, on that truck, it has plastic ones. So I have been waiting for Arma to release these red aluminum ones for that truck. You can use aftermarket ones like other companies' braces. The only thing is they'll only have the one mount point type thing, and I do want to use the new braces and the new design. So I'll just kind of wait for Arma to release those. In the front... You can see now the bell cranks, the servo saver and all that kind of fun stuff. You can see the big piece of aluminum here now, as well as guys right there. Such a small but huge improvement. 25 tooth servo horn. 
Now, another part that's worth mentioning, guys, that they've improved is the rear wing mount. Now, that's a good thing because I've broken many wing mounts on Creightons in the past, but the downside to that is that the V5 wheelie bar no longer works with this. I think we're going to have to wait for Arma to release a 6S Outcast EXP RTR where they'll have to integrate a wheelie bar into the new wing mounts for us to get a wing mount for the Creighton. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully they already have something. Maybe even at the time of this video, they've already released one. But in my experience, the way things are going to go is we probably won't see a wheelie bar until they release the Outcast version of the truck. And then we're going to be able to get the wheelie. Now, we didn't touch on the electronics when we were doing the kind of looking over the box art and all that kind of fun stuff. You have the 2050 KV motor, the Firma 150 version 2 ESC. We already did cover the S665 servo. The only thing I didn't mention, guys, is that they did change a few things on the actual servo case. You now have an alloy case kind of center. So as you can see, I'll probably put it up, uh, I don't know, maybe down here. You can see that there's now an alloy case around the center of the servo. That's going to add a little bit of strength, but it's more there. Even Armand themselves say it. It's more for just helping with heat dissipation and stuff like that. Obviously, as the servo is working up, it generates a little bit of heat. Plastic doesn't do a very good job of kind of transferring the heat out or anything, but having the metal center will. It would have been nice just to see an overall metal servo. So like where all your mount points are and stuff like that, because I have snapped those before. But either way, it's still a nice improvement. The one thing that we did not get at all into with this truck and with the electronics was the radio and the receiver. Now it comes with the DX3 transmitter, which is a fantastic RTR transmitter. It's probably the best in the business. Unlike some of the other armors that come with the SLT3 transmitter, it is nice that Arma included this one. My Outcast 8S EXP RTR also came with the DX3, but one of the nice changes they did with this truck was include the SR6200A AVC receiver. Now, it's a six channel receiver, built in telemetry, AVC, but it also has guys in auto calibration for AVC. So if you can remember, anybody that has ever rebound an AVC receiver knows what I'm getting at when you do the bind, you connect it to your transmitter, but the truck doesn't move. And that's because you have to go through the whole calibration of AVC. Now, one thing worth noting guys is that this truck should have improved range. They did make the antenna longer on the receiver. Now, personally guys, I've never had any issues with any of my previous Spectrum receivers when it comes to range. I would say maybe max distance for me is maybe 100, 120 yards. And that's when I'm actually trying to test something and really pushing the truck. I... All right, guys, there you have it. The Armor Creighton 6S EXP RTR. Now, unfortunately for me, at the time that I started this video, we had no snow on the ground and it was about minus three, minus four, which I was considering cold. However, as of today, which is the next day, it's minus 14 and feels like minus 20 and we got snow last night now fingers crossed we don't get any more snow we only got a few inches so it's just going to make things a little bit yucky but not overall all that bad it's that cold that i'm kind of worried about it's supposed to lift in the next few days to get down to like or up to minus two minus three which for canadians is that's not bad in the winter time but the one thing guys i just want to mention before we kind of wrap things up is over here i've got a few casey rc upgrades they're all for the cooling system. Now, I know that seems kind of weird because I literally just told you that today it's minus 14, but I do want to change the cooling on this truck, kind of get it ready for the spring and summer. I'm going to be sticking to the stock electronics for a while. So both the ESC and motor, and I want to kind of, I don't want to say push them to their limits or anything like that, but I'm going to give them everything they need to perform as well as they possibly can. Truck comes with a 13 tooth pinion. I am going to install the high speed 16 tooth pinion in it and try to keep the truck running on that at a nice good level to keep my temps down, all that kind of fun stuff. You can see over here, this is the motor mount with the fan and the little top mount. Right here is the Firma 150 kind of mount that goes on the ESC and then you can install the tornado fan on top. So I'm going to be doing guys a full video on that. I'll have links to everything to show you guys how to do this what you're going to need to upgrade the cooling. I'm going to be doing the same thing on my Corelli Kagama as well. Everybody always talks about how fast the stock electronics are in a Corelli car. Those cars are fast, but they are usually geared up a little bit and they do have temp issues. I've had temp issues pretty much with every Corelli I have, except for my Skeeter. So that's going to be coming soon, but that is it. Like I've mentioned many times in this video, guys, I am so pumped to have this truck back. It is just a rock solid performer. It looks good. It performs well. It's durable. 
I was going to kind of get into things a little bit more in another video, but one of the biggest pluses to a truck like this is that you are going to drive it hard. You're going to bash it. You're going to send it. And you know what? You're able to get parts fairly easy. Your hobby stores, your online hobby stores, everywhere you go are going to have parts for this truck. You're going to be able to go on eBay. You're going to be able to pick up parts from the chop shops where you're going to get you know, front and rear arms, all that kind of stuff. And I have been noticing in the last few weeks, guys, that I have broke everything on my trucks. Sitting around waiting two or three weeks, I have not been able to drive the Big Rock. I've not been able to drive the Savage. That sucks because I was really excited to drive those trucks. So I got one run in the Savage and I'm down because of a skid plate. Something like this, even the hobby shop guys that's about an hour from me would carry the part. So you know what? If I really needed to, they'll throw a part on a bus for me or I can go up and pick it up myself. But either way, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and have a great day.